Welcome to another episode of Tied to Nature's Yellowstone. If you're tuning in on the podcast, I want you to let you know that I am doing a video of this one as well today, as this video is going to have a map on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going through the loops of Yellowstone. Again, this is kind of, you know, I'm still doing that broad overview, kind of give you an idea. Let's say you decide to take a tour of Yellowstone, or if you decide to go in by yourself, you have one day, what are you going to do? Are you going to hit the lower loop? Or are you going to hit the northern loop? Where are you going to go to? What are the highlights that you should consider? Where should you stop? How long should you stop places? I try to give you an idea of where to go, and what to do. And the way I'm going to be doing this is, you know, you could come in the loop all different directions because I start out of the West entrance. I'm going to start from the West entrance on this. So you're at the West entrance of Yellowstone. Yeah. You go through the gate and actually before you get through the gate, you just, you got to consider the gate itself. West Yellowstone, depending on the time of year that you come in, you might be waiting for a little bit. The traffic might be backed up there. There's about four entryways that people can get through uh, that will funnel and kind of go back into town sometimes. So you got to think most people are going to start after eight o'clock, you know, eight, eight 30 starts getting busy, nine, 10 o'clock. You're going to be waiting to get in. So that's the first thing to consider is what time are you coming and how long are you willing to, to wait at the entrance? Anyway, so if you're, if you're with me on uh, the YouTube, you can see that I'm going to be using my cursor here. And if you're not, you know, pull up a map on your phone and or maybe you have a map from Yellowstone, get it on your computer and you can follow along that way as well. Or maybe you know what I'm talking about. I'll try to give you some good directions here. So you're starting from West Yellowstone and you're driving east towards Madison. So that first section is about 14 miles. That 14 miles, it takes you to get into the lower loop of Yellowstone. So things to consider along this stretch, uh, let's start with the wildlife. So along this stretch, typically you can find elk. You know, it's gonna have to be earlier in the morning, later in the evening. And this is gonna be for the summertime. Every season, like if you mentioned, listen to the last podcast episodes, You'll notice that the season kind of changes a little bit. So spring, summer, and the fall, you can typically find elk somewhere along this stretch. Uh, it might have to be in the morning or evenings when it's coolest, just because the elk are going to go back into the trees. They're going to seek that shelter from the sun during the daytime. In the winter time, if you drive this stretch, you will see a lot more bison. Uh, they they migrate and they hang out of this area and they'll actually take this route um, from the Madison kind of cross the Madison River and head over towards north towards the north of West Yellowstone as they migrate. But along this section, you, so you have that river corridor, you know, in the summertime, you might see the bison through here, not typically, but if they are through here, expect a little, a little bit of traffic. A lot of people are excited to see them through there. And, you know, it's some of the first animals you see. And so you get some traffic on this section as people get in and they're excited. You are following the Madison River. So along that stretch from West Yellowstone to Madison, uh, you're following the river most of the way. And once you get to Madison Junction is actually where that river is formed. There are two other rivers there, which is the Fire Hole and the Gibbon, which combine to make that river. There's some great scenic opportunities through here as well. Uh, places that I typically like to stop or point out to people. One is about seven miles in, just after you pass the bridge, you're going to come to your kind of the first big open meadow. And that's a great place to stop and see what's out there. You know, get a pair of binoculars. There's going to be the river through there. You might get different waterfowl. You have a great chance to see an elk through there. This last fall, there's about 40 to 50 elk through there, a big bull with his harem that was hanging out in that meadow. Um, you know, and look at the tree line. You never know what you might see. You know, you'll get coyotes through there. Coyotes can be tough because they blend in very well. That's where a pair of binoculars comes in handy. And then as you go up about 10 miles or so in, you're going to see what's called the Mount Haynes Overlook. And Mount Haynes is named after a photographer, an early photographer in the park. 
I think it's one of the prettiest sections under photographic sections as far as landscapes along the section. You have this outcropping of this old, this old lava rock, and you have the river that flows in front of it, little meadow, little island out in the, the river. So it's a nice place to stop there. You know, that's kind of the, the first 14 miles kind of recommendations. Again, I can't go through every single little place. There is so much to see. And let's, if you have a day in Yellowstone, you can't stop any, everywhere as well. You're going to stop as much as you can, try to get the best of it, but you can't stop everywhere. Just remember that. And the other nice thing is on this first section along the Madison is if you come in from West Yellowstone, you do the loop and you come back out the same way, you know, at the end of the day, you have time to spend more time through here. Uh, coming up to Madison Junction, I typically, in the summertime, like to go north first because that's going to be the shortest route over to the east side of the park to Hayden Valley, kind of the best place for wildlife on this, this loop. If you go south, you can go south as well. South is going to take you to Old Faithful, and you would only be 16 miles from Old Faithful. Something to consider here, you know, I like to get in the park by about 7 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, it is still going to be cold until 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, where you're going to start at around probably 40 degrees. So at 40 degrees, you're going to have a lot more steam in the air. Going to have it's going to be the visibility is going to be harder for some of the hot springs and geysers to see in the morning. At the same time, it is very pretty, especially with that first light coming through. But between those two things, I I tend to go north. So from Madison Junction going north, you are again 14 miles to Norris Junction, and there's a couple things along that spot. Uh, you have Gibbon Falls, which is a nice waterfall. And I remember when I was going there 10 years ago, well, I guess probably over 10 years ago. And before that time, it was just a pull out for about three cars that you could stop and see this. And now there is a great place, a uh, great big parking area. There's a restroom there, a nice walk to see the falls and the falls you're looking down on. So Gibbon Falls is going to be, well, on this route, I would say it's one of the smaller waterfalls. It's not a small waterfall, but it's going to be one of the smaller waterfalls that you would see. It's a great stop, great place to kind of break up this 14-mile loop is, or 14-mile stretch, as I tell people. Um, the other thing I want to point out, if you're watching the map, this is a great map because you're going to see areas that are labeled with picnic areas with the little picnic tables. And so... Along those areas with the picnic tables, there's usually, not always, there's a good chance there's a restroom with there. So something to think about is once you leave Madison Junction, which there is um, just not far from there, there's a little visitor center, has a nice restroom. The next one from there, next nice restroom you're going to find is going south to Old Faithful or going north and over to Canyon Village. And so restrooms along the way, that's that's really important to people. Uh, I always bring that up and tell people, you know, actually the, the way that I I label the bathrooms in the park, I tell people there's anywhere from a one star to a, a five star. The one stars are not very pretty. It's the kind of the hole in the ground. Well, not basically it is, but it's a outhouse style. So a vault toilet. Now, the two stars are the trees. The three stars, three star and up has running water. And so something to think about, you have restrooms along the way, but you know, what kind of restroom do you want to use along the way? So going back, you have Gibbon Falls. Uh, from Gibbon Falls, if you go further up, you're going to run into Gibbon Meadows. And Gibbon Meadows is a beautiful spot. Don't often see things as far as wildlife out there. that You occasionally can. You know, I've seen elk and bison, especially in the wintertime. In the wintertime, you're going to see more through there. Summertime. It's hit and miss. Sometimes bison will show up. Sometimes you'll get elk way along the edge. Uh, right there, kind of connected with Gibbon Meadows, there's a, a parking lot if you go east in this parking area. And you're going to have artist paint pots. And so artist paint pots is, oh, it's I think it's a mile to mile and a half loop that you're going to walk. And it's one of those places of the 
two or three that I can think of. That's a great area to see paint pots. I think it's probably one of the best areas. Nice springs in there. Good walk. It's a smaller parking area. So it is a good way to kind of get away from people. You know, you're not going to have quite the same crowds. I mean, the parking lot does fill up. Again, you might have to be patient waiting for a minute for a parking spot. But once you get in there, the, the area is big enough that it doesn't feel like it's, you know, crowded in that area. Uh, going from Artist Paint Parts um, further north, you're going to run into Chocolate Pot. Now, Chocolate part is, Pot is hard to see. So you're going to have a little, uh, it's a little picnic area right along the Gibbon River, kind of set back in the trees. And as you pass that, before you get to what's called Elk Park, your next big open meadow area, there's a couple pullouts. One of those pullouts, the first one past the picnic area, is going to be where Chocolate Pot is. And Chocolate Pot is this, just this neat little hot spring across from the river. I mean, just bubbling up there. And they call it Chocolate Pot because of the amount of iron in the water. As you take, they say, if you take a scoop of water out of that, a cup of water, that water will turn brown. So it oxidizes because of how much how much iron is in the water and you know i should go back i missed one place after after gibbon falls there's a place called burl springs burl it's named after a precious gem and so that's really neat right there at burl springs you have both a hot spring it's about 190 or just over 190 degrees and you also have a fumarole a fumarole is a steam vent there's a lot of hot air coming out and that's neat because you, you see these two different features and they're very different from each other. Uh, Burl Springs is really bubbling up, has a lot of, you know, big bubbles coming up. And when you see the bubbles, it's, it's not boiling, it's gases being released. And then behind that, you have this loud noise coming from the fumarole. So those are some great places through there to stop. On this section, as far as wildlife, I mentioned, you know, the meadows, watch for bison, watch for elk. You know, occasionally from... Gibbon Falls up to Burl Springs and up to Gibbon Meadows, especially in the springtime, maybe the fall time. There's a grizzly bear that likes to hang out in that area. And so watch for watch for her. Depending on the year, she might have cubs. Um, I have seen a couple black bears on that stretch. I've seen otters a couple times in the river right before you get to Gibbon Meadows. And again, watch for coyotes through there. Um, so you know, this, this section, it's it's one of those things. You could see a bear, you could see a wolf, a coyote, elk, bison. You can see any of these animals throughout the park. And I won't met, try to mention them all over the place, but some of them, especially elk, bison, coyotes, you can see anywhere. Um, you know, these hot spots, I'll try to tell you a little bit more of, you know, you know where you can see a bear, where you can see a wolf, the, the best places in general. So anyways, you get up to Norris and... At Norris Junction, that's where you have the option of going north to Mammoth Hot Springs. Or you can go east over to Canyon Village and take a little drive to the west into the parking lot of Norris Geyser Basin. Norris Geyser Basin is going to be one of the hottest, most acidic places in the park. It's a big area to walk around. That's where you're going to find steamboat geyser which is the world's largest geyser it's not something that you probably want to around, wait around for you could be waiting well just like anything maybe you're you're waiting five minutes it could be 20 days that you're waiting there for steamboat geyser to go off and so there's a great great area to walk around there big parking lot it that parking lot does get full and they have overflow parking out along the road there so that's Norris Geyser Basin. And then from Norris Geyser Basin over to Canyon, yeah, it's a 12-mile stretch there. Along the way, you have a, uh, another picnic area. Right there with that picnic area, there's a nice meadow through there. And then you have a one-way drive. It's about a two-mile drive called Virginia Cascades. And Virginia Cascades is a nice drive. And, of course, it's a Cascades you're looking at. Um, that you can see along the way as part of the, the Gibbon River through there. 
And the, the Cascades, it's neat because you're, you're parked. It's right there. You see where it's going down. And I tell people it kind of looks like Splash Mountain if you've been to Disneyland. It almost looks like, don't do this, please. But it almost looks like it's something you could get a tube and just ride that down. That would be not recommended. That would be very dangerous. But you have, you'll notice it's from here, uh, the Gibbon River you're following here compared to the Gibbon River you're following along the Madison to Norris is a lot smaller. It's a lot narrower because you're getting closer to the headwaters of the Gibbon River. So you have that, that's probably the most scenic stretch on that 12 miles is this uh, two mile area along Virginia Cascades. A lot of this is forested area. So for most part, when I do this drive, it's, you know, just, hey, we're going to cruise through here real quick. There's not a whole lot to see. And we're getting over to Canyon Village. And so, and something to think about on this stretch, you know, depending on what you want to stop, how early, how interested in your wildlife, if people really want to see wildlife when they're on tours with me as we're doing that lower loop, I'll say, you guys, hey, let's, let's go straight over to Hayden Valley. It's going to take yeah, just over an hour from us to get to the west entrance, come in and get over the uh, canyon area. We'll stop for wildlife. Uh, you know, we're going to see other geyser basins that we'll do, you know, at the other end of the day. The waterfall, we're going to see more of those. And so sometimes I'll, I'll just kind of cruise through this section looking for wildlife. So we can get over to Hayden Valley and you still have a whole lot of the park and you kind of get to slow down a little bit as you go through the rest of that. Just as a, you know, if you're thinking about wildlife and at the same time, you don't want to miss anything. You know, there are, there's so much to see so much that Yellowstone has to offer. And that's, that's one way to do it. So at Canyon Visitor Center, of course you have the visitor center there. You have, restrooms nice restrooms there so you can find some of the five-star restrooms you're going to have places to eat uh you're going to have gift shops so the whole thing right here in the the visitor center and again with a covid year it's always best to check beforehand what they're doing for, as far as food the visitor center what if they're open if they're you know this last year they weren't open to go in but they would have rangers outside that could answer information you could get your stamp for the passport passport and things so from canyon visitor center as you go south you're 16 miles down to fishing bridge now this is the section there's quite a bit through here that i like to do first thing i do if i'm looking for wildlife is i go straight down to hayden valley and so hayden valley you know i'm going to be stopping along the way i just make different stops places that i know there's you know, along Alum Creek is another one. As you go to the top of the hill, there's a place called Grizzly Overlook and down uh, by El Antler Creek. And there's a little hike there. And I'm just stopping to glass or get out my binoculars and look just to see if I can find anything. And, you know, I, that's where I'm looking for grizzly bears and wolves specifically. Often you will see elk and bison, the coyotes through this stretch. Um, you know, bald eagles, ospreys, different things. But those are kind of the two things that a lot of people are wanting or expecting to see as they, they want to see a bear. That's the wildlife that I'm trying to get over to this area early in the morning for. Now, getting over to Hayden Valley early in the morning, it can pay off. But at the same time, you could be over there for a couple hours before the fog lifts. Because oftentimes the fog will settle in, especially after it rains in Hayden Valley. And it may not lift until nine or later. So it's, you got to kind of start early, but don't start too early if you're looking for wildlife over there. And so often you can see bears, you can see wolves. There's the Wapiti Lake Pack that in the winter time, or excuse me, the summertime, the spring, I guess, they do den in this area historically. Um, and so I'll go through Hayden Valley looking for wildlife. Then I'll backtrack and go up to the canyon area. So I'll scroll this up here if you're following along on YouTube. And you'll see here you have the South Rim Drive and you have the North Rim Drive. So there's two different sides of the canyon. And I prefer the North Rim Drive. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll go through. You also have the South Rim Drive, which a lot of people are familiar with Artist Point. So Artist Point is a great look at the lower falls. The lower falls is the, the larger of the two waterfalls there. 
of the lower and the upper falls. It's about 300 feet. An artist point is the more scenic lookout. You're further away from the waterfall, but you have this, you know, the river running in front of you as it leads up to, to the lower falls. You also have a trail along there. You can have, you have a great view of the upper falls from the kind of the Uncle Tom's area. And they just redid that. So there's a great couple vantage points to see the upper falls from that side. Now, if you go around to the North Rim Drive, the, the side that I liked, or I do like, so you have the brink of the upper falls, which I think is the best way to see the upper falls because you're going down to the brink. The brink is where the waterfall falls over the edge. And it's a short hike. There's some, I think it's like 30 stairs or something. And a short hike, it's like a quarter mile. So it's not very far. And it's a great view of that waterfall. You're sitting right above it. Now, from the lower falls here, I like to go out to Lookout Point. Lookout Point, it's a smaller parking lot. Usually there's less people there. And if, the, you know, if you kind of get, it's a smaller area to view from as well. But people do a good job of, you know, getting the pictures and moving back for the next group to get a picture. And it's a much closer view, more intimate view of the waterfall. And that's why I like it from the North Rim Drive there at Lookout Point. Uh, you also can get to the brink of the lower falls on the North Rim Drive, which I tell people it's about three eighths of a mile down and about two miles back up. So it is, you know, it's a steep climb to get back up, steep drop down, but it is worth seeing. Uh, continue on the North Rim Drive. You have, you could go out to Inspiration Point, which is seeing the widest point of the canyon there. And this will wrap you back around to Canyon Village, the Visitor Center, Again, give you another chance for the restroom and things before you move south. And so going south from Canyon Village, you know, I'm headed back towards Hayden Valley. And again, if it's wildlife that are on people's mind, that does a couple things for me is I can get down and say, hey, Hayden Valley's fogged in. Let's go do the waterfalls. Or we go down through Hayden Valley. There's not much on the wildlife. We're not finding anything. Let's go do the waterfalls. And I have a second go at Hayden Valley to try for the wildlife again. Kind of go through the valley doing the same type of thing. And through this area, we are following the Yellowstone River and, you know, glassing along the way, seeing what we can find as far as the wildlife through that section. Uh, after you leave Hayden Valley, you get to Mud Volcano, which I tell people Mud Volcano, if you were to, you know, advertise for Yellowstone, Mud Volcano, you know, nobody would come. It's, it stinks and it smells bad is kind of the way it explains. But it's at the same time, it's very different. So, again, a more acidic area. You have one thing there, sulfur cauldron. It's like a 1.5 on the pH scale. So a neat area to walk around. Dragon's Mouth there. I can convince anybody that's eight years old or younger that there's a dragon in Dragon's Mouth. So going from Mud Volcano going south, you got Lahardy Rapids. I'll occasionally stop there, especially in the springtime. So look at the Harlequin Ducks going south of Lahardy Rapids. Uh, you get to Fishing Bridge, which at Fishing Bridge, you can no longer fish, but they used to do that. And you have two options. This is where you can go further east and you could go out towards the east entrance. And this section here is a longer section. You're about 27 miles. And I will... Even on these lower loop trips, take a little bit of time to go out this way, not all the way out to the east entrance. Uh, but I spend usually from, I think it's nine miles or so from that junction out to Lake Butte. And I like to do that section because of grizzly bears. It's a great area to see grizzly bears along the lake. You have uh, Mary's Bay and Sedge Bay. Go places, you know, if somebody wants to skip rocks for a second, get out of the vehicle. It's a good place to do it. Or going up to Lake Butte, uh, going to the top of this little drive here at Lake Butte will give you a look over Yellowstone Lake. And on a great, a clear day, you can see as far south to the Tetons. If you go further from there, there's some great views going over Sylvan Pass. Um, before that, you get you know Sylvan Lake, which is just a beautiful little lake along this stretch out to the east entrance. You occasionally find bighorn sheep through there as well. So a very scenic mountainous drive on this section. Uh, along Yellowstone Lake, there are places uh, also that are really good for elk in the fall time. Listen for them bugling. 
and anywhere from canyon you know anywhere that's forested the canyon down around the lake on both sides there are places to look for great gray owls which is a very popular species of owl to look for as well now if you go from fishing bridge and you go further south down into west thumb you have 21 mile section there uh, as you go down fishing bridge i should mention actually there's a little visitor center there is um oh what am i thinking of uh there's going to be places for food there as well as well as gift shop that's what i'm thinking of a gift shop there so a few things to do in that area, a gas station. And I should mention gas stations. You know, the major areas, um, Canyon, Fishing Bridge, uh, Grant Village, Old Faithful, there are gas stations you can find along the way. So going further south from Fishing Bridge, going to run into Lake Village. Lake Village, great overview of the lake again. You have the, the Lake Hotel and the Lake Lodge there. The Lake Hotel is worth going and take a look at. That was built in 1890. It's a beautiful building that sits right on the lake. Going further south to Bridge Bay, uh, there is going to be a place where you can, you can get on a boat and take a boat tour from there if you want to. Uh, so that's where the marina is. And Bridge Bay, uh, you know, along the lake here as well, good place for, for wildlife, for bears and elk again. Bridge Bay up to Lake Village and kind of the section, great place for some elk. There's usually some big bulls that will hang out there through the summertime. Uh, going further south, you know, you have a lot of lake and a lot of forest through here. So it is a beautiful drive. It's one of those places, again, I say, okay, you know, not a whole lot of maybe stopping through here. We've seen the lake a few times, but I do like to have lunch to this area. So usually I'm hitting this area, you know, if I start at seven o'clock through the gate i'm usually somewhere around the lake by 11 o'clock 11 30 for lunch and this goes throughout the park anywhere i'm at 11 to 11 30 is lunch time and i do that because by you know 12 o'clock picnic tables picnic areas they're full and so i try to find a nice picnic table you know spread out the tablecloth and we we have a nice scenic lunch and the best part of the lunch is always the view and having a a spot along the, uh, along the lake is great for that. So you're going along the lake, and there's some scenic places to stop along the lake. You know, skip the rocks. If you're, you're anywhere in the park, especially along the lake, I don't like to pick up a handful of the, the dirt, the rocks, and you'll see a little pieces of obsidian throughout it. And you come around to West Thumb, and just before you get to West Thumb, there's a burned area. And in that burned area, it's close here to the picnic area. Uh, also a great place for looking for elk through there. Once you get to West Thumb, West Thumb area, right in the parking lot, you'll get an elk occasionally as well. Uh, all of these elk that you see, it doesn't matter if they're at a picnic area or in the geyser basin, they are wild. You have to keep your distance from them. Um, especially, you know, one time right here at this picnic area at West, or, um, along the west thumb of the of the lake which is this portion of the lake uh there was an elk calf i mean it must have been 15 20 feet from the restrooms there and a lot of people want to see it get pictures yeah stay away from that because a mom shows up she is not going to be happy so the elk through here their elk are still still wild so at west thumb uh you have a great geyser basin there again along a uh, uh, along a, a walk along the the lake there's some neat things to see there right in the lake like a fishing cone fishing cone is a cone where people used to go fishing from it the story is it catch a fish keep it on their hook dip it there in the lake or excuse me dip it in the hot spring in the lake cook it there on the spot so at west thumb geyser basin good area a couple nice colorful pools to walk around and see there as well so from west thumb you have two options to go. You have you go south. Uh, you go south about 22 miles, which will put you to the south entrance of the park. From there, you're into uh, the John D. Rockefeller Jr. Memorial Park. Par uh, so mouthful. John D. Rockefeller Jr. Memorial Parkway, and then from there down into Grand Teton National Park. On that section going south, uh, you have Lewis Falls, which is very nice. I think it's about a 30 foot waterfall. 
It's one of those that I could just set up a lawn chair and watch. You also have Lewis Lake, which is a beautiful lake, especially on the morning. That's just clear. That thing is just crystal clear. Um, I should mention, you know, it's, it's people want to get out, maybe put your feet in the water, maybe, hey, can we go swimming in the lake? The lake is very cold. This is a big lake, and I think the average surface temperature is like 60 degrees. It's not a lake that you want to go go swimming in necessarily. So from West Thumb, you're going to head kind of, this is where you kind of start going north and west, and this is going to be about 17 miles to Old Faithful. And so this first section, you have Craig Pass that you're going over. Uh, again, not a lot through here. There's some scenic overviews. You also have Isa Lake, which I'll mention. But on this section, kind of from West Thumb, um, I have service there. And that's where I call, call to get an, a prediction on Old Faithful. So sometimes on this 17 miles, you know, there's really about two places that – I think are, are scenic that I, I stop at but I'm trying to find, you know, get to old faithful, you know, for that next eruption, or maybe we have a little bit of time. I like to stop at Isa Lake, which Isa Lake is neat because it, it sits, this lake sits right on the continental divide. And when the water's high enough, the, the water flows both directions, East and West, but it, there's a little phenomenon there, I guess you could say, because the Eastern outlet flows West, Western outlet flows east and you'll see actually right here this line yep it's dotted line is the continental divide so basically the continental divide separates water flow uh, from east to west so after you know iso lake there's leeches in that water it's just a small lake it's more like a puddle is what i tell people or a little pond and there's also salamanders two things that i look for there and then going down to Kepler Cascades is a great cascade there to stop at. And again, right in this area, you start getting service. Again, to check on Old Faithful. So, you know, I mentioned Old Faithful. You can call Old Faithful. There's a hotline number, which I'll post in the, the notes for this podcast. And so you can call and, you know, press one for Old Faithful's prediction, press two for the other guys or predictions to kind of get an idea of when you should be there. And, you know, they – tell you it's a plus or minus 10 minutes on old faithful i always like to be there about 20 minutes beforehand just to play it safe make sure we catch the eruption that we're there for otherwise you have about an hour and a half wait till the next one so kepler cascades is nice this is where you're going to start seeing the Firehole river and from there you're into the old faithful area then old faithful there's a lot more going on there than old faithful you know i think some people expect to show up and there's just this geyser and nothing around you do have a couple hotels a visitor center lodging excuse me um gift shops gas stations and everything going on in there uh you're going to be watching old faithful with depending on when you go you you know in the winter time you know watch it with uh, a couple hundred people in the summertime it could be a couple thousand people that you're going to watch it there with uh, a lot of people come for old faithful and they disperse over the gift shops and things you could do two or to three miles of hiking through the geyser basin at Old Faithful. You know, get a, a well, four or so geysers that are actually predicted there besides Old Faithful, plus a hundred others or a couple hundred others that you might catch along the way. And so you can see that there's this whole area. You have Geyser Hill, which has a bunch of geysers on it. You have Grand Geyser, you have Castle Geyser. You're going to have Riverside Geyser. You're going to have Daisy Geyser and also a bike trail through there. So there's a lot going on in that area. Uh, at Old Faithful, when I'm there, we usually watch Old Faithful and I maybe get going to the, uh, the Old Faithful Inn, which is terrific. I mean, it's a beautiful building. I'll talk a little bit about the history there. And then we move on from there because from here, going north to Madison, you're 16 miles. And this is where... You know, I've, majority of the hot springs are the geyser basins in the park are. So going north from Old Faithful, not very far, you have Black Sand Basin, which is a little smaller geyser basin that you can walk around. Uh, going up to Biscuit Basin, a little bigger geyser basin. I like Biscuit Basin, a couple nice springs, but it also has a geyser that we can count on, Jewel Geyser that goes about every 10 minutes. 
From there, you go up, you have Midway Geyser Basin. The two big things there are going to be the Grand Prismatic Hot Spring and Excelsior Geyser. Uh, Excelsior's dormant. That's a big crater there with a, a beautiful hot spring now. Uh, most of the time, what I would do, because this is people want to see Grand Prismatic, is from Old Faithful, I'll go up to the Grand Prismatic Hot Spring. And there's a, a trailhead, the Ferry Falls Trailhead. I'll find parking there. And there's a half mile, well, I think we it's a little longer than a half mile out one direction to go to the top of this hill. Most of it's flat, but the last little bit, you raise up and you look down on Grand Prismatic Hot Spring. And that's where that is. And after that, then you, you have Firehole Lake Drive, which is a nice place to do after your hike. It's hot. You know, by this time, it's getting to be, you know, one, two o'clock. It's, it's warmer out in the summertime. And then this Firehole Lake Drive is a one-way drive. Some great hot springs. Kind of a, I guess you could say a cool down after uh, the hike and be able to see some more hot springs. Um, and places that you can stay in the car and just kind of drive by or get out along the way. And as you come out of that, you have fountain paint pots. Fountain paint pots is nice. Uh, I don't hit it as often in the summertime because after midway, you know, people are tired, you know, probably stopped at West Thumb. And, you know, in the wintertime, I, I hit fountain paint pots every day. But Fountain Paint Pots has all four features in one area. So you have hot springs, mud pots, a geyser, and the fumaroles there. So that's what's nice about Fountain Paint Pots. And then from Fountain Paint Pots, you have this, this meadow that goes across the, the flats. Uh, then you get up to past Nance Pierce Creek and you start following the Firehole River. Some beautiful scenic places through here. And towards the end of this, uh, you had to start on the, the north side. There's a Again, about a two-mile drive that goes through the Firehole Canyon. There's another nice waterfall through there. And beautiful views of this canyon. And you end back up at Madison Junction. As far as this section, you know, from Old Faithful to Madison as far as wildlife, in the springtime, you'll catch bears through here. In the summertime, you rare, rarely will. Uh, catch bison through here periodically. They're crossing back and forth between Hayden uh, Hayden's where you're going to see most of the activity with bison through the summertime. And, and as you get back to Madison, as I mentioned, you have that, that 14 miles back out of the, to the West entrance and have some options to stop there as you go back out. Now, so that's kind of the way that I'd run a tour. Uh, you know, maybe that's the way that you should think about doing that lower loop. But as you go, you have to think about your timing. You, if you're, you have a day, you know, you're not, if you're going to do that whole loop, you're not going to have a chance to stop at every geyser basin along the way. You know, typically two to three geyser basins, if you're, you keep on pace, um, is what you can maybe expect to do. You know, spending time in Hayden Valley looking for wildlife, doing the waterfalls along the lake. And that's why Old Faithful is important to catch it. Why, you know, at a timing, you know, that you're not waiting around three, four hours there. You do that, you're going to miss, or you're going to spend, a, I guess, a really long day in the park. So what I just explained to you, you know, I do about eight hours on that loop. Um, I mean, you have, you have so many different ways you can do this. You have a couple of days, you go out to Hayden Valley, see that north side of the loop, go back home. You come in the other day and you go down to West Thumb and back and spend a lot of time in the geyser basins. But in general, that's that's what I'm doing. Eight hour tour in Yellowstone covers that loop and you go off at a couple of places. But, uh, that's what I want to share with you today. Uh, feel free if you have any questions on that ways to to do this, to break it up. You know, text, call me, email me. You can find that on the, the website. Uh, on Facebook, anywhere, you know, you can find my contact information. And the next, the next episode you're going to catch in a, a week, I'm going to be going over this Northern Loop and what that encompasses, uh, getting into Lamar Valley, which is, you know, more of the, the wildlife side, the wildlife loop, I guess you could say, a lot richer wildlife on that North side. But again, thanks for tuning in.